Hello and welcome back. It's me, Kleshna, your crafting queen. I'm hot back from the Craft Hobby Association show in Anaheim, where my bangle weaving tool, which was made for me by Beadalon, actually won top product of the year. I am so made up, as you might well imagine. Little old me has actually won the top award for her bangle weaver. Ta -da! And it even has my mugshot on the box. Isn't that exciting? Anyway, enough of that. What I would like to do now is to show you actually how to weave with the bangle making tool and how incredibly flexible it is. I hope that this will be the first of very, very many bangle weaving projects that we'll share together. Okay, folks, we're down on my beadboard now, as you can see. Um, I've got here two reels of wire, which I'm going to work with to show you beginners how to use the bangle weaver, okay? What I like using is the thickest bead stringing wire that you can get and that you can afford. Um, so here I've got two spools of 19 strand beading wire. Um, as you can see, I'm going to point with my needle, they are not 0 0.024 inches or 0 0.61 millimeter thick and both of them are the same here in diameter. And when I'm talking about diameter, I'm talking about how thick the actual wire is here. Now, if you are feeling very flush and you are making a bangle for a very special occasion, let's sh shove those out there, um, then I would suggest that you use the 49 strand and that you use the 0.036 um, width gauge or the 0.91 millimeter gauge which is much thicker there you go you can see that there now in when we're talking about thickness of things i just want to bring a few bangles up here to show you because if you are using a thicker um medium to weave with then you will need to make your bangle on the wider or the widest um part on the disc at the bottom. Now what I mean by the disc, and I will bring the bangle weaver, my little baby here, ah, oh, mummy loves you, um, is you can see here that we have three sets of holes. This is for little weenie wrists, maybe for a, a child or for someone who is a sort of a, a double O size. Um, this is for sort of more normal size wrists, which is me. And this is for the larger wrist here. Now, you know, dependent on the medium you're using, as I've said, and or the size of your wrist. Now, to measure your wrist, you will need to put your thumb in like that and measure around here. And that will help to give you the circumference of your wrist size, okay? Because it needs to be difficult to go over your hand. Otherwise, you'll have a bangle that jingles around a little bit too much. So we've gone through the wire, we've gone through the sizing of the bracelet holes. Now we're going to start um, by putting two of the spool tamers onto our wire. This is a, a rather nifty little thing. It's made with an elastic and there's a little hole at the top here. Now you can see how badly behaved my wire here just started being when I was putting the spool tamer on naughty wire behave yourself right and now it just holds the wire <clears throat> and it will stop you um, from having this problem which is as you can see the wire has a natural tendency to spring out from the spool and by using the spool tamer over here um, you don't have that problem at all so there we go I put two spool tamers on you can see that now I'm going to get out some of my wondrous um, crimps. I love these crimps. I get them um, by the ton, says she, no, by the um, kilo from France. And the reason I like them is because they've got little sort of niches in the side of them. And when you crimp them together, it seems to hold it. We can sell you a few of these if you're interested. Now, I put my crimp on just about here. I get my pair of crimping pliers and I apply them where it's got the little 
um, wavy part which is the second part on the crimpers and what that does is it squeezes it and it makes a tiny fold then I go up to the top part of the crimpers and I just squish it again not too hard you don't have to go mad you know we're not sort of um, rounding up the cattle here we don't need that strength thank the Lord right so you can see here we've got both ends crimped together let me move my needle out of the way let me get my bangle weaver on to the beadboard now on the bangle weaver there is a little nick in it and that denotes the beginning now one thing I would like to tell you is I am a lefty I do everything left-handed so if you are going to weave for someone who is a left-handed person you will pop your two wires over by the nick and you will start to weave going around to the left. It's just a natural thing, you will naturally feel more comfortable. If you are a right-handed person, let me take this off, you will put it on again by the nick and you will start to weave whoops, going around to the right if that makes sense to you I hope it does so as I'm a lefty I'm going to take that off and I'm going to start going around towards the left again now there are we need to weave evenly to get a beautiful bracelet and the way you do this is the back the the spool that has the wire coming towards the back of the warp comes over the top of the black one then the black one replaces it, it goes over the top and then the silver one goes underneath that. Then the silver one becomes the one that goes over the back and the black one goes underneath the silver one. So whatever goes over at the back, the front one will go underneath. So this one is going behind, the silver goes behind, the black one goes under. The black one now replaces the silver goes behind the silver one goes under, the silver one goes behind, the black one goes under. Now I have created this word for a lovely friend of mine who is a Mexican and he said I, I still don't get it Clash. and I said it's just think of bunda so back and under, back and under, back and under so we go we go bunda, bunda Bunda, bunda. And you will do that whether you're left handed or right handed. You always have to go the same way. You always have to um, in, do this in order to create an even weave. And in a few seconds, you will just see that I've done my first row. So there we go. Let me show you, put this up onto its side. I'm just going to pop, push this down all the way around. You'll need to tamp it down every now and again but look I've done my first row I've got back to my nick and then I'm simply going to push that down and I'm going to carry on carry on here I'm going back under silver one goes behind black one goes under black one behind silver under and so on and so forth and we just keep on doing that and as you need it Pull your, your spools out. The spool tamer, remember, is going to stop all your wire from coming out. And we're going back and under. Back and under. So whichever colour on this I have put behind, um, the next colour becomes the one that goes behind. And the other one goes under. So this is why I invented this strange little thing. I want to have like a Macarena dance that goes, a bunda, bunda, bunda. There we go. God, you're going to think I'm crackers again. Um, but hey, all the best people are slightly mad, I think. So there we go. I have now done row two. So the one that is just before the nick will show you that I've got row one here and row two here. And then I'm going to start row three as soon as I go across the nick. But pull out a little bit more from my spool here. I'm going to do row three and then I will show you 
when I get back round. So it builds up fairly quickly. There we go. Black one's going behind, silver one's going under. I quite like that. Silver one's going behind, black one's going under. And I am doing it on my special bead board, which I designed for the lovely Beads Direct. And I use this every single day, as do all of the girls who work with me in my studio. They're all wonderful, I have to tell you. Along with the studio dog, who is Darling Tilly, who I think we might even be able to show you a shot of at the beginning of this video. But she comes in and she sits underneath my table like a little sweetheart and um, she then goes to sleep. So if ever you're watching any of my videos and you hear a slight sort of... It's not me, it's Tilly. Right, and there we are. We've got back to the beginning again. So by the, just before the one before the nick, you will know that you've done a full revolution. And there we go, we have three rows here. Now, what I'm going to do is to suggest that maybe have a little cup of tea now, or I'm going to show you next um, how you would actually take your weave off and re-warp it. Okay, folks, here I have a bangle. So let's agree that this is the thickness that you were going to do. What you will need to do is make sure that you are back to the niche, which is this little bit here. And I would suggest that you then cut it a little bit further away so that you've got a tiny bit of leeway with your ends. I'm going to undo it back to here because do you remember when we were discussing where it finishes and ends, it finishes just before the nick here. I'm going to get one of my superb little crimps that I was throwing praise on before and I'm going to insert both of these ends here into the crimp and you see where it joins I'm just going to show you see how it joins here where it would go through for the weft if you can insofar as is humanly possible crimp it on the join there so pop your crimpers over it get it in line with the join here in fact one of the things it might be easier to do is to just squish it very gently flat there before you crimp it. There we go, it's much easier because otherwise it has a tendency to um, move around a fair bit. Oh, well, let's do this a bit better. Sorry, it's always a bit cack handed when you're videoing something. There we go. And there we go. I've made a little neat thing here. I'm now going to turn these over. It's easier to go up backwards here to chop that off. I'm going to push it behind here. Now, what I'm going to do is to show you how to insert the warps, how to re-warp it. What you will need to do is get your fingernail underneath the weave and move it up a little bit, all right, all the way around. It might look a little bit wibbly wobbly woo, but don't worry about that, okay? Because it will all come into true once you have rewalked it. Let's move that out of the way. Right, I'm just going to show you this because it's easier for you to see. What you need to do, quite simply, is have yourself a little box like this. Because if you lose these little rubber stoppers here, um, you know, it is going to cause you a lot of grief when you next want to weave because you won't have sufficient of them. So you literally take all the rubber stoppers off. Oops, come here. You naughty little rubber stopper here. You take the rubber stoppers off with your thumbnail. You can see how quickly it's done, can't you? All the way around. Almost done all of them. And one of the things I like to do with the rubber stoppers once I've taken them all off is I like to pop them onto the the top of these here and if you do it with a slight sort of a I don't I suppose it's like a little bit of a a, a twist and push movement um, 
it's quite a quick thing to do. And have I just dropped one? No, I haven't. It's saved by my, my lap here, which is great. So literally, you just place them on top of the warps all the way around. Now, the reason that you do this is if you've actually woven yourself a, a thick bangle, which I will show you in a minute, one of the things you don't want to happen is for the weave to come off the top of the bangle weaver because then you're completely um, done in. Um, so always do this. Sometimes you can cheat a bit. If you've got a very slim bangle like this, you can move it up the warp and you can warp it whilst it's still on the bangle weaver. But shh, I didn't say that. That's, that's a cheat's way of doing it. This is the orthodox way of doing it. And unlike myself, you're not going to be making 40, 50 um, bangles necessarily, one after another. So I'm almost done now. You see, it's very quick. And I kind of pinch and do a little twisty bit so that the um, rubber goes down quite simply on top of the warp sticks. There we go. Oh, two more left. And I found one which I dropped on the floor the other day. Golly, that was a nightmare. You know how you, you, you just get butterfingers sometimes? Right, now literally get your thumbs and push all the way around the circumference and what you'll do then is you'll loosen it up and you just gently give it a little wiggle and it will come off. Okay, so now you're ready to replace these warps here. Now if you're weaving with material when you take it off you'll find it looks a nightmare. It'll all be skew all over the place. Don't worry it all comes back into true. Now what I have here is the very thickest wire that I can get in 19 strand, um, which I think I have been weaving with, you will find, and that is the, mm -mm -mm -mm, bear with me, and I will tell you, I think it's the um, 0.36 or the 0.91 millimeter, although that might be just in the 49 strand. But anyway, um, suffice to say, it's the thickest one that you can get, which we are selling here because I think getting the warp in correctly is terribly important. And what you will do is you will also require to have a bodkin. Now this is a bodkin, it's got two holes in it and I have to say that the best bodkin I have found, and you know it's not to say that you won't find another one, is made by um, Prim. So let's turn that round this way. And it, the code is 131320. You get two in the pack. Um, I don't use the one on the left which has a very large eye, but I do use the one on the right and I have to say I guard it with my life. Um, I've got a magnetic bar above my um, uh, the, my desk in the studio and I pop it back on the magnetic bar every single time I've, after I've used it. You can either thread it in that way or if you, if you want to you can thread it in the other way. But you can now see why I like to have the two holes because I put the top bit in to the top hole of it and the bottom into the bottom. And then what I'm going to do quite simply is you see where the warp stick is, I'm going to pass this through that hole there and I'm going to pull it through. Now sometimes if you're again if you are doing and I'm going to even it up like this. So I'm going to pull it so I have an even amount of warp wire either side. I know I will have gone out of the frame folks but don't worry about it because you've heard what you need to do and then literally what you will need to do is you will need to go through and cross these over each other like this. So either you can cross it this way, unthread the needle, cross it over, you can buy two needles or you can do what I often do which is I do all of one way first and then I do all of the other way afterwards. 
it's just a funny little habit, but you know, there is no right or wrong. The only right or wrong is the fact that you have to, have to, have to replace the warps um, before you take them out. Otherwise you will get left with just quite simply a mess of wire, a very tangled web of wire. So I'm going to do this um, for the purpose of your being able to see how to re-warp correctly. Now, this is where your snipe nose pliers or blunt nose pliers will come in handy. Because sometimes it does tend to get stuck and do not be afraid to give it a darn good tug. But again, if you're using material, do look inside it when you're putting the needle through just to check that you have gone through everything. I'm just, for the purpose of this, going to show you what it will look like when you've got the warps crossed. Okay, and whoop, come back here. Naughty thread. Right, pop that in through there. So there we go. I'm going to, no, I think I'll go in front of it. So I'm going to warp here. There we go. Can you see? And always bring this piece here. I like to bring in front of um, the, the two warp rods. Try not to twist it. If it's twisted, just be gentle and just be patient. God, we all get very impatient when it's coming towards the end of a product or a project. There we go. I'm going to go in front. Again, there is no right or wrong. You can go either behind the previous warp or in front of it. But what I would say with anything that you're doing in weaving is be consistent, how, you know, how you are doing something. There we go. Now, because I haven't made a very thick bangle here, you can see that the warp rods are wibbling around a little bit. But um, I wouldn't worry about that because you have your lovely rubber bungs on either end, your rubber stoppers, and that will stop it slipping through. And you literally will need to do this all the way around. So I'm going to continue doing this and I will come back to you in a minute when I finish doing these warps. Okay, folks, I have finished re-warping this wonderful piece of weaving that I've done here. One thing I forgot to tell you was that for a very thin bracelet, you're probably only going to need about a metre, maybe a little metre, smidge, a metre and a half. However, always better to have a little bit too much wire when you're re-warping than a little bit too less because you'll get thoroughly fed up with yourself if you don't have enough or don't have sufficient. Now, I have got all the way back round, I've crossed over as you can see here, right round to the beginning. What I like to do instead of um, using another crimp is I just like to warp a couple more uh, places from where I have finished doing the precise one. And then I just quite simply cut my wire off. So I'm doing an extra warp here just get my pliers to pull this through. Popping that around the top of this one. There we go. Lovely. And I'm going to warp through here. You know, you won't really notice it in the greater scheme of things, but it does gives you, it's what I would call a little belt and braces effect. So I'm going to pull that one through here. we go. Take the needle out here. So simple to do with this wonderful needle. Gosh, I can't begin to tell you how many different needles I tried. I tried to use the wonderful John James's needles, but it just wasn't quite the same. Hold on. But their, their beading needles are magnificent. There we go. Right through here. Bum, 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 bum. Do, 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 do. There we go. And just to tell you, you can also always um, decorate the ends of the warps. You know, because this is a small bracelet, I haven't pulled it up too much here. Or should I say, not a very 
um, deep or thick bangle here. Right, I am now going to go snip here. So I'm pulling it up towards me and I'm going to go snip and then I'm going to go snip here. And now, da -da -da -da, roll of drums, uh, literally you just take the end off here. I'm trying not to jiggle the table too much because otherwise the camera is going to um, wiggle and I will get complaints that you can't see properly. But take all of these off. Now, what I should be doing is what I always tell other people to do, is put these in a box immediately. Or one of the other things I often do is every time I take a warp out, I put it straight back into the bangle weaver so that it's all always pre-set up. Now, it all depends on whether you've got enough room to keep it. So let's go all the way around, take these off. You know, guard these with your life because they're very valuable, these little end bits. And if you always put them straight back into a box, then you will always know, oops, that one's come off the other way, and that has come out. <gasps> you see, you're seeing it unwarped now. Um, there we go. And either I can go like this. No, I can't go like that. I'm just going to take them all out. It's exciting, this part, isn't it? Because you then see what you've created. Now, I have to say, the very skinny bangles, unless you're working with different sort of wire, are not always going to be um, your broadest ones. But there we go. You have a bangle. Let's just pop it on. Do you see what I mean about putting it on? And, and here I have my first bangle that I have made. Well, not the first one I've made, but you know what I mean. 